to reiterate the theme for our discussion this hour is meaningful materials. So specifically talking about the materials that go into creating a work of art and the meaning that's ascribed to those materials. Right now, here we are in our African galleries. We're um, looking at this, uh, this large mask in the middle of the case here, surrounded by uh, additional masks and um, ensemble items of, from the, today, the Democratic Republic of Congo in Central Africa. Specifically, this is the Cuba Kingdom, and this mask is particularly regional to the, the northern area of, of uh, the, the Cuba Kingdom. It's a funerary mask that was worn in um, funerary celebratory dances in honor of a uh, deceased titled aristocracy of the culture. So, but looking at the materials, who wants to tell me some of the items that you see that the artist has chosen to include in uh, manufacturing this, this splendid mask? Feathers. Feathers. So, yeah, right here we have these, these wonderful orange-red feathers of the parrot, actually. Yeah, what else do we see? Shells. Shells. Specifically, they're called cowrie shells, right? So these wonderful cowrie shells. Now, again, this is, so this is Central Africa, landlocked Democratic Republic of Congo. Where, where, where on earth did they get these, these cowrie shells from? Predominantly imported all the way from the Indian Ocean and other... Uh, other uh, coastal regions. Yeah, what are some other materials? Beads, lovely beadwork, the, these blue and white, very, very minute scale, beautiful beadwork here that we have, creating these wonderful geometric, decorative, repetitive patterns all around. And we see a similar patterning and beadwork and cowrie shells on the, uh, the belts and other uh, items uh, and similar adjacent masks. So you definitely see there's a bit of a a, uh, a continuity the of design. Are these things? Mm -hmm. The cowrie yeah. shells are, yeah, these okay. little white, uh, white shells that kind of almost look like beans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that a mm -hmm. skin? Is yes, like a on the face. Or, uh, yes, yeah. so on the f uh, uh, well, yeah, and I say the face, even though it's on a mask there. But we do have, yes, this this leopard fur, the spotted uh, great cat uh, skin there. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And yeah, and I, I said face. So, uh, you, do you do you see also similarly a bit of a face on the mask as well? Yeah, this wonderful face within the mask uh, with the eyes and the eyes. It's a little hard to tell what those eyes are made out of. Also, all these other materials we've been looking at are organic, but those are uh, those are the only synthesized materials. So those are metal bells, little bells that the, on the eyes. How about this beard, too, with uh, these long, wonderful uh, hairs of uh, monkey? Is that straw in the back? So straw in the back there, yeah. Well, and this is part of a much larger ensemble that was also worn by the dancer. So Rafia coming down here that would have fully covered the dancer. Anything that might suggest an elephant? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, we have this, this wonderful uh, great proboscis coming from the top of the hat, oh, the tr like an elephant's trunk, and, the, uh, and the, uh, the tusks as well, composed of the beads and the cowrie shells. So quite, so quite a number of different materials that go into this. And each material, it's not chosen <laughs> just because it's available, but it, they have the deep, uh, resonating, symbolic meaning as well. So the elephant is evocative of leadership, uh, king of the region, the, the leader of the, the wilds, the elephant. Well, and also in part, uh, leadership in that it's uh, the, it was among the Cuba, the king tightly controlled the trade of ivory, which was a very lucrative market. And so it's speaking also, though, of, uh, of wealth and prosperity and income, the cowrie shells What's interesting is we often find value ascribed to something because it comes from a faraway place. So scarcity and rarity by that uh, account. The cowrie shells also are so highly prized regionally for a, a long time to the extent that they served even as a, a, a type of currency. So now here they certainly have that decorative value, but it does speak of, of wealth and prosperity, right? So, and remember, this is a mask that specifically 
is intended for funerary celebrations of titled aristocracy, so the, the wealthy, the elite of the society. Beads also a, uh, an item that came in through, through exchange, through trade, so another uh, rare foreign import. The beard here, these, the, the, the monkey fur, a colobus monkey, large species of monkey, so a little bit of some, some ferocity, but at the same time also uh, emblematic of uh, a, a regal royal nature. What are some other uh, materials? Oh, yeah, and then the leopard fur, so also a similar uh, um, noble regal creature of the, uh, of, of the, the, the wild. Uh, a lot of different materials that come together that evoke ideas of, of status, of elite, of prosperity, wealth. Interesting, though, also we have this, this juxtaposition of the, the parrot feathers with the elephant, the suggestion of the elephant's trunk. So this great, mighty, weighty, massive creature, this uh, evocative of leadership. But a leader, a king, also needs to be agile and, uh, uh, in, eff- in essence, uh, like a flighted bird, being able to, um, to you know, make quick turns and, and, and be aloft. And also, uh, in a sense, a spiritual, celestial type of creature. The parrot, specifically, also is a creature who, uh, in this, this culture, among these, uh, this region, uh, is evocative of oracle and prophecy, tying in also with the ideas that are ascribed to a leader, being able to have that, that forethought and vision.